Hello and welcome to a game of Dota 2! Ha! As uh, the first bands on the Rocks case proven that they that God like did his homework. So yes, we have got ourselves a game between Rocks case and Oslo like Gaming and um, previous game that OSG had, or at least the game that they had on Friday, they were able to beat Alliance because they picked up a Husker. Now, if you look quickly to the scores, you see that OSG is not really doing all too hot. They've played eight games, three wins, five losses, and one of those wins is actually a death win that everybody gets for 4FC pulling out of the tournament. And, <clears throat> I mean, OSG, getting that win with the Husker, they are probably going to look to repeat it, or at least to repeat the surprise factor. Perhaps they can still get it this game. Rock's Kiss, they have been doing quite okay. They have only lost two games so far. I've only played six games though, so not a lot that we can say about their um, well, about their season just yet. Tenth position, looking to, of course, move up in the world, move up in the roster, move up in the ranks. And of course, um, well, I say of course, but I normally at this point I would introduce to you my co-caster, but for the first game, unfortunately for you and for me as well, I don't have a co-caster. However, I will be joined by GED fans after this game for the next four games to come. That's right, we're going to have five games today in total. Just to quickly run down the games that you're going to see after OSG versus Rux Kiss. And we're going to see Empire taking on Na'Vi, and that's going to be a really great match, I believe. Rock's Kiss afterwards will take on Na'Vi as well. Alliance versus Power Rangers, and Power Rangers versus Mouse. And those will be our games today. A lot of great games today, if you ask me. And I'm hoping for some good Dota, and this would be the perfect warm-up game, as we have got, with all these bands going to the Huskar, going to the Slark. We've got ourselves an Elder Titan making it through the pool. Now Pugna and Lich are also still in. I'm mostly Pugna, that is banned out fairly often, so we'll see if Rux gets their hand on that one. Or if Oslik Gaming goes for it, or if it's just being completely ignored. I mean, with Oslik Gaming banning out the Abaddon, also they did their homework, of course, Goblack goes for that Abaddon very often. Uh, the combination that Rockskis normally goes for with the dual lane, with the Abaddon, is maybe not that possible anymore. They do still go Dying for that Pugna, though, and Alchemist gets picked up by Oslik, with already a Viper in the pool, already a Viper picked up. <clears throat> it could be... <clears throat> wow. Sorry there. It could be that we're going to see an Radiant Alchemist support. Could see him safe lane. Uh, seeing him solo mid, I'm going to expect uh, to be having Viper there. So we'll see what, what role the alchemist does, and I mean it's it's kind of interesting because of course there's multiple options when there is an alchemist, but also Rox has keep, kept kept their options open. We've seen them run the Pugna on the safe lane before. BZZ has Five actually played Pugna remaining. recently on the solo safe lane. Actually, no, he played a Storm, I believe. Yeah, he played a Storm yesterday. Well, we'll see. Elder Titan, however, that's that's a strong hero, and we're gonna see him most likely on a solo lane, be that off lane, be that solo safe lane. I'm expecting off lane, but you know time will tell. Visage is the other ban uh, that comes from Rock's Kiss, and, and one thing that, you know, Dire you can see team. from this draft so far, Crystal Maiden and Venomancer completely Radiant ignored. Nobody cares about them. And, and surprising ban coming out from Oslik, still banning out the OD. So that means that they're still expecting that Pugna or the Elder Titan, or at least that there's no mid hero just yet. And they still don't want to see the... Uh, the OD up against a Viper. Now Viper Ten has actually got a remaining. tough time up against Pugna because every time you Five use mana, remaining. which of course you also do for your poison attack, you'll be taking damage from that ward. So Radiant you can't actually team. harass all that successfully if that ward is up. So we'll see if that's gonna if that's gonna be something that's gonna hurt Viper. And if that's gonna be of course our mid matchup. Lich is on the band that also the gaming goes for, so still support removed. A support that can, of course, uh, delay the farm of the carry that Oslik Gaming is going to go for slash is already having because, again, we still don't really know what these two are going to do. We've actually seen Viper on the safe lane solo as well, so Ten seconds there is remaining. so much still possible here for Oslik Gaming. It is Rock's Kiss that banned out the Clockwork as the last remaining. one, I guess. Of all the heroes that you could still pick up for Oslik Gaming, an offlaner is the one that is the least likely to be already seen on Oslik Gaming, so they don't want to be dealing with the Clockwork. I don't blame them. That initiation power is, is too much for them. I do think that Oslik Gaming needs a bit of initiation. I mean, of course, Alchemist can do that job, but it really depends what kind of role he plays. If he is going to be getting enough farm to get himself, for example, Blink Dagger or Shadow Blade, then he is going to be the initiator. But otherwise, uh, they could use something else. So Shadow Blade on a Viper, I'm not really expecting it, but it's a possibility. 
Depends on, of course, what else they pick up. Crystal Main, there you go. That's gonna be the support Dyer being picked up. I'm expecting Rocks to also follow suit. I mean, it's kind of, um, it's kind of needed to pick up support because you don't want to have your the best support snatched Radiant away from you. So they select an Earthshaker. With that, they have themselves a very safe laner, a very safe, uh, safe laner. As in, not a safe. Yeah, you know what I mean. A safe support. Let's call it that. Safe support. Now we've seen rocks go for dual lanes with an Earthshaker and Wind Ranger on the off lane, and just have Earthshaker go for the pool and pulling the waves back to the ancient camp, and of course, you know, getting that from that way, and better yet, denying farm to his Ten enemies seconds. because of him doing that. And I was like, gaming. I mean, they already removed Five the lich for that very remaining. purpose of not getting denied experience. But if Earthshaker is gonna do that, well, I was like, gaming is gonna time. be sad. Unless they're running an aggressive trail lane, in which case they'll force the Earthshaker to go on top lane. Still a lot is possible. And with an Earthshaker in the pool for rocks, they're not really Ten set on having the second support with a Disable anymore. So they could, for example, select the Venomancer. Seconds remaining. Slowing Naga people down. Siren. Well, that's a Naga Siren. Also one Dyer of those heroes team. that we have seen as carry again. I mean, Miracle Naga, I don't think anybody missed that one. But we've also seen her as support a lot. I mean, with the Disable, with the song, she's just a very usable hero. A good utility hero to have in your team, regardless of what kind of role she plays. We've even seen in the past, we've seen Naga going on the mid lane. Now, Rock's Kiss. I mean, even with... The, I guess... I mean, I just said that they didn't really need uh, another support with the Disable, but if... Like, they have the Pugna and the Elder Titan. Remaining. And with now already on Onslaught Gaming, the Frostbite, the Ensnare, the Alchemist co on Stable Concoction, you know, you've got a lot of disables going for Onslaught Gaming already. Well, Rocks only really brings one, unless you count the Decrepify. Echo Stomp, I'm not really counting it as a disable because you kind of can't get away from that one, so... It is interesting, but... Maybe Rock still wants to have one of those disabled supports, and better yet, I'm I'm kind of thinking that they need a ranged support as their last. If they're going to be picking up a secondary actual support, they need a ranged. Or they can always go for something like a Chen and Enchantress and just keep everything safe and just wait for their momentum to start, wait for their levels and their items to come align, and have a lineup that can deal with that. And with an Earthshaker on the team, you definitely have yourself a team that can wait it out. Well, they go for a Klinks. That is indeed a safe laner. Radiant team a, a solo laner, to be exact. So Enchantress and Chen could definitely be options for Rocks here. And just use... Because uh, every single hero on their side, every single hero on Rocks' side, excluding the Earthshaker, can solo a lane. So they could put Klinks on a safe lane, Pugna on the mid lane, Elder Titan on the off lane, and still have Earthshaker pulling the Five waves towards the ancient remaining. camp, the waves on the bottom lane, to deny experience. And then still have a channel Enchantress. It is Zeltai. fairly greedy, but it is definitely doable. Naga Siren and Crystal Maiden, if those are Dyer the two supports, bad. they might not be too heavy roam supports to make things happen. Ursh uh, Alchemist, by the way, if Alchemist is going to be support with the Crystal Maiden, that's a whole different story. Alchemist has the potential to be a lot more aggressive earlier on than I believe a Naga Siren can be. Ten seconds remaining. And mid lane overall is a fairly easy lane to gank, especially with Viper helping Five out with slows. Remaining. It just depends on which one they're gonna put in their safe lane, or if they're Reserve if they're time. still gonna run an aggressive trial lane. It's not really likely though, because either like either Naga or Alchemist is gonna probably be taking a farm, and both of those, if you put them in the farming role, they need a lot of time to farm their their items up, a lot of early time. I mean, Alchemist can, can, can come online fairly early, of course, because of his Grievous Greed, potentially Hanamitis as well, but he does need to be left alone. He does need to be having his time. He can't, you can't really put him in an aggressive trial and still expect him to do decent in farm. So for Osley Gaming, they just need an offlaner, and I was I was actually gonna say Radiant Timber, so <laughs> believe me here, because I would have also said if I mentioned, if I wasn't aiming for something else, but actually, you know which hero is still in the pool? And I think that I was like gaming kind of disconnecting because they just didn't bet anything. But Nature's Prophet is still in the pool. No chat going on, so this is kind of awkward. Especially since nobody has actually disconnected on the side of OSG. Just checking to see if admins has said anything, but nope, that is not the case. Ten we'll see uh, what they'll random. And um, I'm kind of... Um, well, Nature's Prophet Five would be a good one to Mirana. see here. They go for Marana. Oh, I almost forgot that she was still Dyer in the pool, but Marana still picked up. As an offlaner, 
I like Morana as an offlane. As long as she's not going to be the one to take the farm, I'm going to be okay with this. I'm really hoping that she is indeed not going to be the one to take the farm, because if she is, then I am not sure if uh, if they have enough to deal with in the Clinks and an Elder Titan later on. Let's take a look at what Rox is going to go for, and if no, there's still nothing said about the last ban for Oslik Gaming. Rox, they only need one more hero. They, like I said, could go for Chen or Enchantress. Could go for one of those supports. Five seconds remaining. Venomaz are still in the pool. Rubik still in the pool, depending on if they feel like... <laughs> or Dazzle. I was going to say, depending on what they feel they can steal, but... Dazzle, support. Hey, I'm not complaining. I'm definitely not complaining. I like it. There is uh, a strong survivability on the side of uh, Rox now with that Dazzle online. And on top of that, I mean, he is... Uh, He's a support that is end range, which I said that the last support should be. And he has got a bit of disable. Um, poison touch. It's, of course, only disable at level 4. 100% slow at level 3, I believe. So, we'll see. And, I mean, he is extra nice with reducing the armor up on Oslake Gaming, who only have one actual tanky hero later on, which will be the Alchemist. And if he reduces armor, that will be... Yeah, that will be him being squishy because his ultimate gives him health and gives him regen, remaining. but it doesn't give him extra armor, which is something that I'm hoping once the game is gonna Five get fast. They need remaining. to have a salt caress, maybe even as second item for the alchemist first if they feel really pressured. But it really depends how things are gonna go. Let's take a look at who is playing what. As OSG has got a Skype problem, so that will be them uh, probably uh, having the reason for uh, not banning out a hero last. Well, we have got, of course, Rock's Kiss. They'll play from the Radiant side. Uh, they'll have Goblack playing the Earthshaker with BCZ on his Pugna. That means that he is indeed going to be a safe lane Pugna. As, uh, well, indeed, I say. Um, that's not true. BCZ is uh, going to be a mid Pugna. What am I saying? Scandal mid? Hmm. Well, either of these two is going to go mid and the other one is going to go on the safe lane. It's just that simple, I guess. Because we've seen BCZ on the safe lane before. And normally he is the carry. But I'm not expecting Killings to be mid. Well, up against the up against the Viper, perhaps. I mean, both have got an orb walk. And the biggest difference is that Scandal just has bigger range than the Viper. So that could be just uh, a very interesting lane to watch, actually. The, the more I talk about it, the more I, I would like to see that one. Anyways, Yul will play the Dazzle. Scandal lead on that Klings and Sidoy. The offlane player will play the Elder Titan. And Yul and Goblack... They don't need to be on any lane per se, because as mentioned, every single one of these three heroes can deal with the lane by himself. So we might have the two just going for the neutrals, going for the ancients. Could be stacking pooling on the top lane, it really depends where they feel like their help is needed, but in a way they can go anywhere they want to. Taking a look at Oslik Gaming, they are playing from the Radiant side for this game. We've got ourselves Chomi, he's playing the Alchemist. We just dig, we'll play the Crystal Maiden with Obi-Wan Banan playing the Naga Siren standing in, which is interesting because he actually used to be a uh, player for OSG. Big Nam will play the Viper, and then last but not least, it is the Marana played by the standing Ink Visitor that we have seen offlane indeed before. Played offlane for. Hmm. Which was it? Espera, I believe. That means we are gonna see a support Naga Siren. And the carry alchemist. And this alchemist actually looks like he is going towards the middle lane with the viper on the safe lane. An alchemist mid up against Klinks is not going to be an easy one. As we do have Klinks sitting in the mid lane. Scandal will take on that Klinks. And we'll take on that alchemist as well. And Yol so far on the bottom lane. I mean he's just warding. I'm, I'm actually surprised to see the uh, the Ur Urshaker standing top. Goblack. I mean, I mentioned that he could be pulling the Ancient uh, Creepway or Creepwave to the Ancients. But so far, doesn't seem to be planning on doing anything of the sorts. As uh, Yol, I I like that. Did you see what he did there? I mean, he was he doesn't have any wards anymore. So he was walking up the, here to pretend he was placing a ward. That is just nice. And I think it's got maybe scouted out, but... The we'll see. Nicely, no, that's, that's nicely done. I mean, if you're going to try to waste your enemy's counter wards, then that's the best thing you can do. Just pretend you're placing wards without actually not placing them. Oh, unless they already saw his inventory being empty. I mean, he he did not place both wards. He placed one and he gave the other one to... What it seems to be... Where did he put the other one? Who has it? 
Elder Titan pick it up? No, he has it back again. Well, he put it down and then he picked it up again. Unless I missaw something. We do have a sentry board placed already. With the Invis rune coming out from Yule, they saw that one. They'll know where he is. And in comes a pause with the vision there. They know, like, and they see that too. They saw it. I think they saw Obi-Wan Banan. He's gonna check it anyways. Yule, he'll be uh, getting uh, killed off here right now. I don't think he has any chance to live. Oh, he picked up the warp first. Perhaps it's going to be enough. The poison, of course, still ticking through. And it is not going to be there anymore. That's going to be no kill going the way of Ostek Gaming. We're so close. And actually, we just ink. He gets punched. Pops us out. But one more punch from Cedar. He will get the kill. The first blood goes to Rock's Kiss. While wow, OSG put so much effort into trying to get that first blood secured. But they couldn't get it done. They couldn't get that last hit in. In the meantime, Marana goes down to the top lane. It is action all over the place. The... The Blast of Fisher, Marana, not with a leap, not able to leap apparently anymore. It's already back here in the lane, of course, because she was uh, able to teleport back. She can't miss this experience coming into her. Especially not with the risk of uh, missing some experience later on, because we do have no wards blocking the camps. And so the pools are already happening. And Rock's Kiss, they make a great start here in the first two minutes. Chomi, in the meantime, only one last hit while Scandal is sitting on three. So he's also going to be... Having a tough time. Show me that is. Scandal is going to be having a great time. He can orb walk. And he should be able to win the lane from Chomi by far. Well, that is one of the worst starts that you can have in a game like this. Almost getting first blood and then giving first blood away. Instantly losing your off laner and also not winning the top lane. So that means that right now none of the lanes are going the way of Oslo like Gaming. Dying and the way to change it is at first, like right now, that's, that, that's the problem right there because... They can't do anything right now. They have to wait and try to farm up and not give too much away because ganking up on the Kalinx is not going to happen. He's going to be going invisible and he's too close to his tower and it's not going to help. You can't, even with the sentry ward there, you'll run out of range because he'll get that extra movement speed. So he is not going to be the one that they can gank. They can't really gank bottom. Perhaps they're going to try middle though. We'll see if we want Banan and we just see can make it happen. It is a very difficult kill to get though. Especially because Scandal will probably see it coming with from a mile away. It depends on how aggressive this alchemist chooses to be. He does have his bottle being brought to him right now. And perhaps that's going to maybe trick Scandal into thinking that that's the reason why he went aggressive. But the smoke gang con uh, continues rotating. He, they are going top. In the meantime, the two heroes on the bottom lane has noted, have noticed that there is nobody there anymore. As a uh, nice counter ward coming out. Very nicely done indeed. And the smoke continues. The smoke is about to run off. That means that we are going to see BZZ finding out about this gank. Unless they're going to try and dive the Mirana. And we just Zeke and, and Obi-Wan Baran. If they fail this gank, they're going to have wasted... Uh, they, they're going to have... Yeah, they, they've wasted a lot of time if they do not get anything here. Which seems to be the case. I mean, it's not that BZZ suspects anything. Or maybe he does. But he is just going to go for neutral experience. Why not? Why put yourself at risk? We just take an Obi-Wan Banan. They are moving into the lane. That's not going to get scouted out by rocks just yet. Maybe it is soon, though. Maybe it is soon. Ink Visitor, very low. Hopefully for him, yeah. One of his teammates has got some regen to, sh to share. They will find Goblike. They know where he is. They've got this Frostbite and this Nova. They'll go for it. In comes the Frostbite, the Ensnare, the Arrow, the Starstorm. Everything is there. The kill goes the way of Marana. Starstorm still. Nicely done, nice pickup, and of course very needed because they couldn't go for rotation and not get anything. And actually, Scandal with the Hastrun, just a couple of arrows needed for Ink Visitor. He doesn't have any region anymore, doesn't have a leap, he'll die! A blast up on a decrepified we just think he won't go down from it. Oh my god, he just killed himself! BZZ helped get that uh, kill with the decrepified, with the ward, the ward coming out was all that was needed. Crystal Maiden put down the blast, hurt herself. And then that one last hit coming from the Pugna got that kill. That is insane. That is very bad luck or just not really knowing uh, what to do there. Of course, he tried to slow the Pugna down so that he could save his teammates as well. But he couldn't get anything done. In the meantime, we've got Big Num in a lot of trouble getting chased down by Ciro. The Spirit comes out. We'll get the kill. Frostbite still coming in from Weeja Zeke. But I don't think it matters. The tower, is it going to be enough? Perhaps it is. It is! With the Nova coming out from Weeja Zeke. That's going to be another kill going away of OSG. Mirana in the meantime. Oh, 
She used her leap, got herself away safe, was very close to dying again. And BCZ as well as Earthshaker don't really show that many signs of struggle. Maybe they're still gonna go for this. In comes the ensnare, the arrow will fly as well, but will actually miss, which is quite surprising because, yeah, well, you know, that was, that was a standing still target. But, okay. Granted. The arrow was sent at the same time as the uh, ensnare, but... In the meantime, though, with Klink's rotating a bit, Chomi is getting some more free time here. He's got himself boots. Still sitting on only 13 last hit, though, so all three cores of Rock's Kiss are still higher than that solo mid on the side of OSG. The only one that is higher than those three cores is this guy, Big Num, the Viper. He is going to be the one to maybe pull this back. If he can get himself an early mechanism to help his team out in fights, then I'd say no harm done. Depending on, of course, if he can continue to get those last hits, because Rock's case, of course, knows that he is now there by himself, because those supports have been rotating a lot, have been showing themselves top. They don't really know where they are right now, though, because they have been in the base for a while. But he is going to be the one to, to take things back into control for OSG, if he gets the levels, if he gets the farm, if he gets the items. We'll see if he gets the items. So far, it has shown me that is uh, the one struggling... That should not be struggling. I mean, okay, Marana is on the offlane. She would struggle. Yeah. She has a tough lane. And actually, the Clapper fight? No, they're not going to go in with that. Not even with the Fisher. In the meantime, there's a smoke gun coming in to, uh, to try and, and do something here. They have the Chemical Rage up. It, and the Unstable Concoction getting charged up as well. BZZ and Goblack will be the ones that they go for. And they go on Goblack first. The Fisher is the one they don't want to deal with. That's going to be one kill. BZZ realized that his teammate was going to get picked up. So he runs and he is safe. One kill on a support or shaker, it's nice. It goes the way of the alchemist, which is good too. But having four heroes used for that, while well, there is still a Klink's free farming bottom, while well, there is still now the Titan, fairly free farming bottom as well, as he's now on par with the last hits of Big Num's Viper. I'm not sure if it's entirely wor worth it. One could ar argue that you might want to rotate bottom instead to make something happen and Radiance look at that, speak as the devil. We've got ourselves a rotation bottom, it's just supports for now. With the Naga coming in as well as the Crystal Maiden. Big Num looking to slow down Cedar. Does he have a Viper Strike? Yes, he does as well. Goes for Cedar here. Obi-Wan Banan tries to at least juke it out. Nice Shallow Grave should allow Cedar to pick up one kill. Might be allowing him to pick up a second. One more hit. Big Num so close to dying. Oh, that was risky business right there. When Viper gets the kill, he will be sent home, or at least he will be going home. Can't really be sent home because there's no Chen, and he can't also be going home while he teleports Cruel because he doesn't have one. Will mean that he can teleport himself back afterwards, though. But good pickup, a very risky one, and of course they still got a, gave a kill to... Ooh, nicely Radiant done, Chomi gets uh, the rune. They still gave a kill to the other Titan, so might not be the, the best kind of trade, but it's still a trade that you're going to be wanting to have. Viper didn't die. That's the most important thing, and he got a kill. An Elder Titan, 3 for 2 for 0, died twice now this game. But he's just punching away, and we know that an Elder Titan, even if having a tough time, I mean, this is the reason why he can't be bottom, right? He knows, they know that, that he can get back up on his feet in no time. He's still gonna be doing damage, he doesn't need items. Levels are enough, level 8, level 4 Natural Order, level 4 Astral Spirit, it's all you need to be punching like, like a truck, like a monster truck even, it's... It's not going to rely on items. Cedo has got his levels and he's going to be happy with that. Of course, items are still welcome, don't get me wrong. Items are still nice. This is not that big of a pressure on him as there might be on others. Like an uh, alchemist, for example. Alchemist who's sitting on 1800 gold. Kind of curious to see what Chomi is going to go for this game. Now, we've seen a lot of alchemists going for Blink Dagger first. And, and that also goes for solo mid alchemists, not just for support ones. But I would really like to see a Shadow Blade this game. Just to get that extra potential of initiation going. I mean, Viper is great now, but he needs to be fairly close to throw out his Viper Strike. And Marana's arrows, you can't always rely on that. Which is, of course, another initiation tool. And the Song of the Siren initiation tool, it is an initiation tool for sure, but it... Oh, Wing Visitor is gonna get leaping... Oh, he's gonna go leaping away. He's gonna get blasted. But... But yeah, I mean, it, I want it like that song. It's a great initiation tool, but I prefer it to be used as a as a as a disengage kind of tool. You just sing and, and get yourself away if things go south. Always have that as a backup, so nothing can go wrong. And if it does, well, you know, sing, leave, plan. Twenty four hundred gold already for this alchemist. He also doesn't have any upgraded boots just yet. Shadows. Moonlight Shadow comes out. 
Oh, Klinks. Where are they gonna go? Do they know he's there? Do they have any kind of detection? In comes a Nova. Going for Yol. They don't know Scandal's here, but now he shows himself. So he gets a stun. The dust goes off as well. They're gonna go for him. But Chomi is the one to get forced out already. He might actually die. There comes the Poison Touch, but it's only level 3, so it will only be slowed. And that is going to be nobody dying. I think that OSG can be very happy with that, because this was the first rotation of Scandal, and he had a double damage rune. So, good on them that they didn't die yet, because Scandal is not yet done with this rotation. He is here again. He can actually take a creep if he wants to. I mean, there's a, there's a satire. Why not? There you go. Good to use farming in the meantime on the top lane. The dive is there. Ink Visitor doesn't have a leap for another four seconds. Okay, go black. Thank you for the Echo Slam. BCZ who will go down and lands a blast before he goes though and actually gets a tower with that as well. In the meantime and Snare Pump Goblack, they're looking for a bit of a return kill. Of course another one that is because okay, they already got one. Obi-Wan Banan, his block doesn't really work out. Scandal in the meantime coming back in already gets Crystal Main. Doesn't get Shomi just yet, maybe he can get him now. Goes invisible, Shomi runs with a, with a chemical rage and he will be living to see another day. Oh, they find him again, the Ensnare comes out as well, they just need to vision. Go on, Ensnare, is there going to be a Viper Strike? There's not. In comes the Minus Armor, an extra armor for Scandal, it should be enough. And actually Scandal tries to turn it around, Obi-Wan Bada, that one arrow, oh my god, low ground miss! That is going to be a kill going the way of the Mirana, of the Viper. Dazzle still got the Naga Siren with the Poison Touch, but it doesn't matter. They got Scandal, they got the Pugna, they got everything there that was important, and they only lost the Mirana for it. And they lost the Naga Siren, or Crystal Maiden, I guess, as well. But supports and offlanes for the core hero of Rock's Kiss, and also, of course, uh, the solo mid of Rock's Kiss. Radiance bottom tower. Is that gonna attack. that's yeah, that's gonna be a good trade for sure. Radiant they will take a tier one tower, nice fortified. fortification, and actually Crystal Maiden coming in as he think does she think she has enough damage? No. Bottom with the blast coming out from BZ, there's no way you're gonna defend yourself from uh from a tower taking, you can't deny that. That's just not possible. As by the way, uh, he has got his Necronomicon level one complete. So we're soon gonna see the start of the part of something. We're gonna have Chomi starting up on Scandal here. Do they have any Oh, detection. They figured they didn't need it. The Sarsum comes out and still gets the kill. Oh my god. Not in this fast enough for killings. The fate time proved to be too much. Nicely done. They are keeping this Klings down. Or attempting to, anyway. And taking a look at the net worth, it's not really working out all too great. But if you're taking into consideration that there's actually two towers down on the side of OSD, while Roxkis hasn't dropped any towers on their own side yet, I mean, taking those two towers and. Yeah, if as soon as OSG starts taking towers, they can get back up. Yul, he will have a shallow grave for himself. Doesn't even need to use it. Oh, it's like gaming. They feel like they needed to back off. Oh, big num. Already taking a big blast at ward. They can take it out. Yeah, they will. Cool. Good job. Arrow flying it. Oh, actually, it's upon Goblack. It's a fairly long range arrow as well. The Crypt Fight will help out with the Riptide. That's gonna be our shaker with the poison touch. Let's see if he's gonna make it out alive. The stun still hits. Oh, Joey with the kill. Show me with the kill. Yep, yep, yep. That happened. A tower, tier 1 tower does get destroyed by a dazzle of all heroes there, so no deny. That's all outer towers, all tier 1 towers down on the side of Osley game. And the kill score might be even, but with those towers down, a rogue's kiss is going to be very far ahead in the net worth. Experience graph is slightly in favor of OSG. They have taken the later kills. OSG has uh, lost most of their heroes early on in the game. And by the way, I mean, after after we saw Cedoy die on the bottom lane, uh, where Viper got the kill and where they still lost their Crystal Maiden, I believe, he hasn't been in any fights since. He has just been farming. He's got drums and fangs. And he hasn't been teleporting, or he hasn't been actually in any kills of the nine kills. So that's going to be one of the bigger differences here, because OSD, everybody is involved. But for Roxkiss, it's only four people that are involved. Scandal, by the way, seems to be on the hunt. On the hunt for a creep. Big Num saw him though. Doesn't want to go for him. I don't blame him. Big Num does have his mechanism ready, so that's the start of, of maybe a bit of a defensive push coming for us. Yeah, I, I know that defensive push sounds stupid, but it's the one thing they can do. As um, as Rock's case, I mean, fighting head on versus Rock's case is not going to be a good one. So if Rock's case is pushing somewhere, then a defensive push would be pushing somewhere else. So that you force everybody of Rock's case back, as they will take this Roshan. Looking to be pretty convincing as well as uh, the rest of uh, OSG is looking to find someone of Roxkis in the jungle of the Dire, but they won't be able to find anybody. Perhaps they can force out a fight around the tier 1 though. 
But they'll have to fight up against a team that now has an Aegis. It's not going to be easy. And Visitor is going to be the first target here. He does have Moonlight Shadow. Leaps himself away. In the meantime, Viper Strike up on Yule. But it's not going to be enough to take him down. They do take the Aegis though. That's going to be Kalings taken down. Sentry Word of the High Ground allowed them to see him. He does have his Orchid, however. So he can go on the hunt. Solo hunts. He can take down almost anybody. Maybe apart from Chomi. But other than that... Rock's kiss. Right now the choking begins. They might not have a substantial enough lead to try and a force out 5 on 5 fights just yet either. I mean, they're still gonna have to be a bit worried about what OSG can, can do to them if they're just walking in. I mean, they have got the Song of the Siren, the Acid Spray. It's, it's still gonna be annoying to fight versus them in a 5 versus 5 capacity, but that's why we see them just, they're just doing the stroking strat so they take out everything in the Radiant Jungle. They make sure that they're forcing OSG to sit behind their tier one, their tier two tower bottom right now, and this means that nobody actually is farming apart from the alchemist. Uh, he did go for a shadow blade, however, and with the shadow blade on the alchemist, we're kind of. I was kind of expecting him to see him a bit more aggressive than what he is right now, but I don't blame him for taking on the, the farm right now because there's, there's really nothing else they can do. They can't really fight against Roxkis right now. It's very difficult. I mean, you'd want to pick off someone by yourself if you're an alchemist at this point. But who are you going to fight by him, find by himself? Roxkiss is grouping up. They know exactly what OSG needs and they don't want to give it to them. In comes the song, but the armor is already done. Do they want to fight this with minus armor? That would be surprising. The arrow will miss because the song didn't get cancelled in time. The earth splitter comes through still. In comes the Star Summon, will be Naga that drops first though. That is Klings for you, he looks for Big Num as well, it gets a double kill. Forces the Visitor to leap away, in comes an Echo Slam taking care of the Alchemist coming in from the side. That was the worst fight that OSD could have taken and now, without having a song, there is nothing stopping Roxkiss from taking a fight as Elder Titan Stomp will actually take the Crystal Maiden down. Just Marana left alive and Ink Visitor, if I was him, I would hide behind my tier 3 tower and just wait until my teammates are back off. No song and no fight, no defense. I am quite surprised that it was the we were looking to find that fight. That was just a, a present for Rock's case. It's like, okay, it's December, Christmas time. Here, have a team fight. It's on us. Well, thank you very much. It was like gaming, Rock's case says, and I'll take a tower on to boot. So. Yeah, that wasn't a great fight, and on top of that, that puts the gold graph now, but like around the 12k in favor of 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 Rock's kiss, actually. Experience graph also. It was it was kind of even up until that point, but that was just a massive fight going the way of Rock's kiss, and nothing else taking in return for it. Nobody else farming on the side of OSG somewhere else. It was just uh, a bit hopeless, to be honest. Trigger happy song. I don't. I don't think they should have gone in at all. Like, just wait. Have a standoff. Have a. St yeah, have a standoff would be the thing to say. Hoping that Rock's kiss make a mistake and not make the mistake yourself. They did exactly what Rus Rock's kiss was hoping for. Well, let's just put that fast uh, that fight behind us and see what OSG is gonna do afterwards. Because uh, in comes an arrow. Goblack still gets hit by that by Chomi. He actually might be dead here, in a lot of trouble. Pops his chemical ray, charging up the stun. We'll still get a double stun out of this one. Ink Visitor does still have a Storm Storm. If he leaps forward to the Star Storms, he'll get the kill, but he'll rather play defensive. The Moonlight Shadow will keep them safe. Nobody actually dies in this gank. The Rock's Kiss, they're gonna do the same thing again. I mean, why not? It worked previous time. Just hang around a tier 2 tower, wait for OSG to make a mistake. Wait for OSG to, to, to waste their song. Yeah, and they know where that ward is. Oh, Alchemist. Coming up with a stun, going for Yol here. The Defcraft fight is going to save him for the moment. In comes an Echo Slam, actually. That's going to be giving Earthshaker a double kill. Split Earth coming out, or at least the Earth Splitter, rather. Star Storm as well. Cedo gets healed up by the mechanism again. 
So far, it's just two for one. Dazzle still went down in this one as Jomi gets chased down by... Whoa, by the other Titan. We'll actually get take a Fisher and Goblack with the Enchanted Totem looking for the kill, but Goblack walks right into an arrow and that might be his undoing. There's not enough mana. Never mind. There was enough mana for Ring Visitor to go for the Star Storm. Barely, but there was enough. Does he have another leap? No, he doesn't. And with the TPs coming out towards the bottom lane, they still want to take down Goblack. The Storm comes in, though, and Goblack blinks himself away and will be fine. Didn't end up getting the kill on Chomi, but also didn't die, and we have got... I mean, this is Roxkis just being so far far ahead. They lost the Dazzle, still got the tier 2 tower, got themselves two kills on the supports as well, and just looks, look, they just look so strong right now. That's just, that's just it. Visitor going for the Fusal Blade. I like it. It actually takes care of the Necronomicon units. Which is something that you need to do because um, Pugna has got his level 3 Necronomicon. He also has got a uh, Gem of True Sight. That kind of means that we're not going to have any good initiation with the Moonlight Shadow anymore. Oh, Sido might be caught out though. He cannot reach that. <laughs> Invisibility rune. Oh, you're so dead, Cedoy. Nice attempt, though, and that's gonna be Viper with the kill. He still reached the Invis rune, but you're always visible in that ensnare, so that that didn't happen anymore. After the mechanism, Viper hasn't been able to get anything else anymore on his inventory. It's kind of sad. Well, the Alchemist starting to build towards his BKB, but also very far away. So far, OSG hasn't been able to take down any of the outer towers of Rock's Kiss just yet. And and that's starting to hurt them, not because I mean, okay, it's it's bad for map control as well, obviously. They're still allowing Ruxkis to have most of the map control. But most of all, it doesn't give them that goal that they need to get all their core items up. I mean their core items might not might might be up right now, but that tower gold might just mean the difference between having that diffuse of light and not, having actually a bit of a more defen like having the BKB ready, just Getting that extra gold, and for supports, most importantly, supports overall normally only get their gold from from towers, and even though that's kind of shifted a bit since the last patch, because everybody gets more gold, they still need that... Whoa. Ooh. Um, just taking a look at the vision here. Um, let's take a look. This, this is visible. I love this ward. I just say that. We'll see if they can initiate with that. That ward is brilliant. And I and I really love we just dig for that ward. They see it all. They see this ward too. And they can just right click it from the side if they actually get in range, which is a different story. But it would be a great thing if, if this is actually a team that could actually look to fight. And actually, they're looking to fight. Not sure why, but they're gonna try. It's already maybe too late, though. The Fisher has already went through. In comes the song, a defensive song, leaving Scandal the only one that can move in his BKB. But he also will run because, you know, you don't want to be focused fired down. And now with the song on cooldown, Rock's Kiss can actually attempt to take this further. They don't have the Aegis, though. And I'm saying that because Roshan is gonna be up again in a minute, uh, just over a minute, actually. And I wouldn't be surprised if Rock's Kiss were actually gonna wait for that. But as long as they haven't lost anybody, then they might as well try to do whatever they can, but they are very far ahead right now, and it shows Arrow up on Elder Titan, but he's thinking enough to live through it all. The tower is still gonna get picked off with the Pugna Blast. Able to just through to through Chew through his health! Wow! English is hard. And they can just start blasting those racks away. Look at this! Just with those searing arrows from the clinks. And the Pugna Blast, this will be an alchemist stunning himself up, and it's actually gonna get scouted out by rocks, but they have... I was gonna say they have backed off. We'll see how far they have backed off, because he might be in a bit too far, but... Ooh, he'll take an arrow, actually! That might be enough, but he'll get four staffed into safety. Nicely done. Four staffs uh, from Dazzle helping everybody, and alchemist once again ending up stunning himself. And this is gonna be a Roshan attempt. They actually smoke up for this. Roshan attempt or push in through middle lane. Either would work. I think Roshan would be the safest uh, road to go through. Mm. 
Well, leaving OSG with a chance to recuperate and to maybe craft a plan to uh, defend their base in the next go. I wonder what they can do though. What they can change. Looking for a BKB on the Viper as well. Just that Fisher. They need to be able to do something against that. Well, the Fisher and also, of course, the. Uh, Roshan has fallen to the, dark. the Dazzle armor minus armor thing. Wow. Weave. Roshan, of course, uh, dead, as we saw it being attempted. We have got the Glinks having the Aegis. So, expect Scandal to be a bit more ballsy than he has before. Even though he has actually just, I mean, he's hit the towers and everything, so I'm not sure what else he could do. And he also has a Chrysalis now. Oh, this is going to be so painful for OSG. They are so far behind. 20k gold behind. 7,500 experience behind is not really something that is, you know, extremely much. But they don't really have the heroes to, to work from a comeback for a comeback. Unless this Alchemist is getting miraculous amount of farm over the next couple of minutes, which... Doesn't seem to really be the case because Roxkiss has done a good job in trying to scare OSG into submission here. Sub to scare them into sticking around in their base. Nice arrow. Oh, yeah. The Crystal Maiden is the true uh, result of a team that didn't take down towers. We are 27 minutes into this game and she's got boots and a magic stick <clears throat> and some warden dust and everything. But other than that, oh, Wing Visitor, you're dead. Nice song. That actually might be keeping him up. It does. In comes a stun and show me. Oh my god, you need to stop the song earlier. Show me actually ended up stunning himself. Crystal Maiden is the one to get blasted. Chomi just tries to run away from this one as Naga Siren gets bursted down by the Elder Titan. This is going to be Rock Sisters moving high ground. The coordination of OSG. Maybe it's their amount of standards that they have, but that just was not good. Stun will hit upon Yule, but it doesn't really matter all that much. It's uh, it's going to be Rax, and it might actually be game with no song upcoming anymore. Crystal Maiden and Naga, of course, fairly low level, so they will be back up in just a second. And Rock's case, the team that would play careful, but they're still going to be able to pick off the mid-tier 3 tower. And perhaps even go on for more arrows will fly. Let's see if Rox is going to go for this, or if, there's gonna, if they're going to wait for OZ to make a mistake again, because that's just what's been happening. They've just been making mistakes, OZ. So Finally, we'll get a stun out, not ending up having the Alchemist stun himself. But that song... I mean, it's a stand-in. That's just... I think that that's the reason that there's not going to be enough... That there's not enough synergy. Rockskis gathering up mid lane again. With all five of them. They're gonna end this. They're, they're gonna try anyways. And OSG, they're gonna of course do their best to stop it from happening, but I'm not sure if they have the power for it. We'll see though. BZ already starting with blasts. Scandal as well. Just a couple of arrows. If they just continue with a couple of arrows and a couple of blasts for time, well then they might as well go for it. Crystal Maiden actually gets picked off. Their arrow will still hit up on Goblack. And Crystal Maiden actually died here. Aggressive four staff. Coming out from uh, from Yol to the low ground. That is insane. The ward is of course there to, to make sure that they saw that Crystal Maiden facing uh, outwards. Tier 3 tower will go down. That Pugna ward still having a, a field day right here. In comes another Alchemist stun. They will end up stunning BZ. Oh, big now. Another aggressive four staff from Yol. Another kill off of that aggressive four staff. Stars from BZ gets a shallow grave. We'll be living to see another day. And it'll just start live draining. Big now is going to be the target. He'll end up going down, and he already just bought back. that twice in a row there. Naga get dropped. That's a GG right there. That's Roxkis taking the victory, and OSG not able to pull themselves together and make a stand here in this game. Roxkis, 30 minutes GG. Very convincing game coming off from them. OSG, I like their idea of trying, but it just the synergy just wasn't there. That is the biggest thing that they lacked in that matchup. Well, we are going to see ourselves another game. The next game that we'll have will feature Navi and Empire, and we'll see which one of these two teams will get the kill, will get the points, because that's what both teams, of course, want. 
Uh, we're gonna see Navi twice in a row, by the way. First up against uh, Empire, as just said, and afterwards we're gonna see them taking on Rock's Kiss, the victor of this game. So let's just stay here. Stick with me, and uh, we'll be right back in about 10 minutes, 12 minutes, we'll have ourselves the game. That's the official starting time, and of course, for the rest, I will be joined by G Advance. So, that is going to be uh, me no longer solo casting, and G Advance being here in a moment. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's head ourselves to the second game of the day. Of course, once again, you're watching Star Lover, and there's going to be more after the break. <laughs> 